to my channel. This is Sandra of Nomad Stitches. I am a knitwear designer and I specialize in crochet. Uh, now this video is part of a series in special crochet techniques. So these are techniques that will help you take your crochet skills to the next level. So not just the basics, but you know, more specialized things that will um, better your designs if you are a designer, but also help you improve on other people's designs to fit your body as well. So today we are talking specifically about short rows. Now, short rows are exactly what they sound like. They are rows that are cut short. The reason you use these are to add more fabric to certain parts of your project. So for example, when you do a heel on a sock, so the heel kind of turns like this so that you can continue on the other side. Um, and the way you do that is by adding more material in the middle to create that triangle shape. You can also use short rows uh, in something like this. So this is a bonnet that I'm working on. This is going to be out in a few weeks, hopefully. Now, as you can see, the elastic on this side is wider than at the bottom. That is so that it can be a bit tighter at the bottom. And the way I did that is by adding more material at the body and not on the elastic, which is accomplished using short rows. So I do more material here, less material in this side. So the short, the rows are short, they go back and then they continue again. But my favorite reason to use short rows is to elongate the back on a pullover or on a top. That way the neckline doesn't choke you, especially when you're working a round yoke or a raglan design. If you have all the pieces the same and the neckline right in the middle of the square, then the back and the front will be at the same level. And either the back is really low so that the front can let you breathe or the front is just as high as the back and then it keeps choking you. Now, the reason why short ears are great is because they add that extra material at the back but not necessarily at the front. So this is an example of the way I've used them. This is my Teotihuacan top. As you can see, the neckline at the front is just one row, this green part. But at the back, I have four rows of double crochet. So these are longer than this one, right? And you can see kind of on the sides how it's like, um, here, I'll show it to you like this so you can see it better. So when it's like this, you can see how it go around and then they come back. So they go around and then it comes back. That's why the sides look like this, like a little triangle. So this is very obvious, right? How they've come and gone back, but it looks fine and it accomplishes the purpose. Another way to use them is on a raglan top like this one. This is a raglan sweater. As you can see as well, the back is longer than the front, which means that it sits really, really nicely on your shoulders. There is no choking and it has very nice shaping. Now, again, just like the other one, if I show it to you like this, you can see how they go around and come back, go around and come back, go around, come back. And then I started going in circles. Okay. Now the disadvantage of short rows in crochet is that the wrong side of a row in crochet looks different from the right side. If you're a knitter, you know that when you purl and you knit, you know, on the right side, they look the same, right? Um, but with crochet, it's not possible to do that. So if you're going to use it for something worked in the round, just be careful that the stitch is not so obvious like this one. You know, you can sort of see the difference very subtly where these rows were worked on the wrong side and then they're all right, right, right side. So, you know, it is noticeable, but it's not super obvious. However, some stitches like all double crochet or all single crochet, you will notice a difference from the front and the wrong side of the stitch. So what I would recommend is that if you are working a design to turn on every row, 
for the whole thing. So you work the shirt rows going right side, wrong side, right side, wrong side. And then when you move to the body, you continue doing that right side, wrong side after you join your round, then you turn around, join your round, turn around. That way the short rows will be completely invisible and you will not notice the difference between the back side of the stitches and the front side of the stitches because they're all, you know, the same. <laughs> um, so that is a tip that I have for you when working short rows. Uh, however, if you can't do it, for example, this, this one, the body has to be on the right side because it's the technique that I'm using. Therefore, the short rows are noticeably, you know, different from the rest of the design because with short rows, you do need to turn around. You can't continue going in circles. I mean, there are ways to get away with it, but it's not really a short row. You're just modifying the row. So let's learn today how to make short rows. How do they work? in your actual material and hopefully you can implement this technique when you are designing something or when you are modifying something that you already uh, have the pattern for. And if you're interested in the patterns that I show you today, you can find all the links in the description, okay? All right, here we go. All right, so short rows are basically rows that are cut short, right? So here I have 12 stitches and I will show you how I make a short row in a method that is very, very common, but that is not my favorite, but it's good for you to know. So on this next row, instead of 12 stitches, I'm only going to go to six. Three, four, five, and six. All right, and now I have my six stitches. I will turn around and go back. Starting from the first stitch, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now, there you go. I have one row that is shorter than the regular one. And I have this little step. Then on my next row, I want 12 stitches again. So I go one, two, three, four, five, and six. So I have six stitches now. Now if I go to the next stitch down here, if I just do this, then I will have a big gap from that step that I had before. So instead of skipping that step, I will make a single crochet two together to join the step and the stitch. So this is one of the techniques. Okay. So I single crochet two together. And there you go. That gap is closed. And then I can continue. Seven, eight, nine, 10, oh sorry, <laughs> I don't know how to count, Six, yes. 11 and 12, yes, I do have 12 stitches. All right, so as you can see, this side is wider than this end. So let's do it again, let's do another short row. So let me go back to the beginning of the row. Okay, so this time I'm, I'm going to use a different technique and I'm going to go a bit, a bit farther. I'm going to go to eight stitches this time. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now this technique is different from the other one I showed you. On this technique I will chain one and I will skip the first stitch and go to the next one. So the first technique I showed you, you simply work on the first stitch. On this one you will skip the first one and go to the next stitch. 
All right, so now I will have seven stitches because I worked eight before and now I work seven. So three, four, five, six, and seven. So just like before, I also have that step that I told you about. And now on the way back, on that step, I will do something different. So let's work all the stitches of that little short row. So I have seven, right? Three, four, five, six, and seven. Now on that step, before we did a single crochet to together, but because I skipped that, that stitch before, I need to make a up for that stitch. So I simply make one single crochet on that step. And then I continue with the rest of the stitches. Now this technique is my favorite one because it's a lot neater. If you see this one, you still have a little bit of a hole. It's kind of, you can see where that short row ended and where I turned around. It's very subtle, but it's there. On the other one, on the other hand, all the gaps are, are closed. There are absolutely no gaps and I just think that it's a little bit neater. So on this kind of short row, you work until however many, five, six, seven, as many as you want. And when you turn, you skip the first step. And then on the way back on that step, you work one single crochet to make up for the stitch that you skipped before. And that is how I do short rows. So let me show you how they look. For example, this is my water lilies bonnet. If you see here, the elastic is smaller than on this section. However, there are the same number of rows in the body. So this is work like this all along. So the way I did that is that I worked to here, then I turned around, went back, then I turned around and then I worked my short row and continued. And then I did it again. I worked a short row here, went back, I did my step and continued. So this elastic has half the rows than this one, but it's all one continuous um, work. And I mean, you can't really tell. There's no holes, there's no gaps, nothing. And it gives it really nice shape so that it gets, um, it stays around the neck under your head. So that's what I did with this bonnet. I also do it a lot in, um, in my pullovers. So this, let me show you an example. This is from my newest pattern, which is a kids build pullover. So it's a bit of a mess. There. So as you can see at the front over here, there are less stitches than at the back. So what I did was work short row, come back, short row, come back, then go a little bit longer, go back, then go a little bit longer on this side and then go back. And then I went around like that until I was satisfied with the amount of stitches at the back compared to the front. And this makes the neckline go a little bit lower at the front than at the back. Uh, this technique of short rows, you all can also use it when you work socks to turn the heel and basically for so many things. Um, but yeah, that's how you work short rows. All right, guys, well, I really, really hope you enjoyed this video and that you have found it helpful. Please remember to subscribe because I do come up with uh, tutorials from time to time. And if you are a designer or if you are simply a crocheter that wants to improve your crochet skills, definitely sign up to this playlist because um, I think that these techniques are super helpful. When I learned them, it changed the way I make my clothes. And, um, and I think it will change the way you crochet as well. Uh, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and see you next time. Bye-bye, have a great day.